we're going to know more about the biggest active aircraft carrier, one of the most powerful ships in the world that navigates our oceans and seas, the USS General Ford. Hello and welcome back to AD Seafer Inside Channel. The biggest, most powerful and modern and the last of the aircraft carriers of the United States Marine, the USS General Ford is ready for its operational and training voyage since its building in 2009, 12 years ago. This aircraft carrier is the first of General Air Force class and they have already scheduled more ship construction of this type, so they replaced the Nimitz class aircraft carriers that UUSS has active since 50 years ago. In fact, the second of the class General Air Force, the John F. Kennedy, is already built, but still at dock. They started building it in 2012, but it won't be delivered to the US Navy till 2024. After, she will be two years more doing sea trials, till 2026. Practically 11 years to have a new aircraft carrier. So now, let's have a look at some interesting data before getting to know more about this sea leviathan. The United States military ships don't have the acronym USS, as to say United States ships, until they are delivered to the Navy. Before, they have the PCU initial, whose meaning is pre-commissioning unit. For this reason, we can name the first ship USS General Ford and the second, UPC John Fitzgerald Kennedy. The law says that the United States has to have 11 active aircraft carriers, but since the USS Enterprise was registered when USS Gerald R. Ford was not even launched due to a list of problems that appear during sea trials, that's supposed six years before being operative. The time and frequency had to be extended of the other 10 aircraft carriers and its crew that had to be deployed on missions. This was the only way to maintain the desired level for the deployment policy designers to warranty national security. Another important fact is that the total cost of the USS Gerald Air Force is more than $13 billion. What does she has that does not have others to explain this high cost? Keeping in mind that the cost of the Nibitz class ships, that is $8.5 billion each, we can say that the high cost of the USS Gerald Air Force is due to the new technologies that she has and due to the resolution of the problems that appeared during sea trials. Among the technological advances, the ship is equipped with e mulse catapults of 91 meters in length that basically is an electromagnetic system of aircraft launching. Until now, steam catapults have been used to launch the aircraft at a required velocity to take off in just a few meters. They could launch at a velocity of 130 knots, a maximum weight of 45,000 kilos. This new system has a linear induction engine that uses electric energy to generate a magnetic field to drive the aircraft through the runway. It is more efficient, smaller, more powerful and easier to control. Besides, it is possible to accelerate the aircraft softly, so as not to exert much pressure on the aircraft structure, resulting in less maintenance and a longer service life. Another new system 
is the new stopping landing gear. The current system is based on the hydraulic to reduce velocity and stop the aircraft landing. Although it is an efficient system, its problems reside in the power and for example it cannot stop the awoke which are aircrafts that do not need crew without damaging them due to their light weight. This new system with a mechanism of electromagnetism controls the energy absorption being the process of the recuperation software, reducing the impact on the aircraft structure. Other than this, the double band radar DBR differs from the past generation brothers since they do not require an operator. The system uses information of the actual context and the combat system doctrine to make automatic decisions, not only reducing the reaction times, but reducing the risks related to the human factor. The nuclear reactor is three times more powerful than those installed in the class Nimitz. It is equipped with two reactors of 300 megawatts each, connected to four turbines, allowing the ship to adapt to future technologies that are high energy demanding. It is also equipped with an aisle, which is the navigational bridge and the control tower, a smaller to avoid turbulence in the runway. It is placed more at the aft of the ship and at the extreme of the beam. The USS Gerald Air Force was put on dock the 13th of November of 2009, launched the 9th of November of 2013, assigned the 22nd of July of 2017, and it will finally enter in active service this year 2022. After all the problems that appear in sea trials. The last problem, already solved, was the problem of the elevators for the weapons, having powerful electromagnetic engines safer than the hydraulic ones that allow the weapon transport, bombs and missiles from the ship's magazine to the flying decks. Increasing the number of elevators by 11, the transportation of the weapons has been reduced, always dangerous, though the safety requirements along the aircraft shed and the flying deck. The ship can afford a 25% more of launching per day than the previous Nimitz class aircraft, and it also requires a 25% less crew. The savings will be around $4 billion regarding operational costs during its lifetime, around 50 years, being capable of holding 4,539 members, Air Force members and crew members. The spectacular dimensions of this aircraft carrier are a dead weight of around 100,000 tons, a length of 337 meters, a draft of 12 meters and a beam in its waterline of 41 meters and in the flying deck of 78 meters. Its velocity exceeds 30 knots, propelled by two nuclear reactors Bechtel A1B, connected to four turbines and four axes with a variable pitch propeller. She can carry more than 75 combat aircrafts of different sizes. She can also carry more aircrafts than other aircraft carriers, unmanned aircrafts and laser bombs for its defense. Regarding its shield, this is considered as classified information. It also has different type of radars, of air search, of objectives acquisition, of air traffic control, of aid at landing, of guidance, and it's protected by weaponry of the type C Sparrow, Drum Dream 116 and Seuss Falks.
Other than this defensive weaponry, the ship can count on all the carrying aircrafts once they are flying, and their own weapons. Besides, we cannot forget naval support for my cruise guided missiles, destructive and nuclear submarines, and some supply ship. Lastly, the ship has a nuclear reactor that has an almost unlimited autonomy, around 25 years. Till here today's report, I hope to see you in the next one.